So we come this morning, we might worship him in spirit and truth. We trust you come with open hearts and open minds and whatever God may say or speak in our hearts and lives. That we're, we're reeling and red, ready to receive of him. So let us welcome him this morning and invite his presence into this place. Father, we bow our heads and we say thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. You sent your only begotten Son that through him we can have life, joy, and speak. But so today... We come to this place and we worship you, Father. We invite the Holy Spirit to have his will and way in everything that's going to be said, everything that's going to be done. Forever song, Lord, we praise you, we bless you, we honor you. Now, Father, we ask you, have your will, have your way, speak to our hearts. And, Father, as we go away, Lord, let us not just be hearers of your word, but, Lord, let us become doers, doing that thing that you have called us to do. We bless you, we love you, we honor you, and we welcome you in this place now. In Jesus' strong and mighty name, amen. 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 You might be seated. It's good to have uh, Brother Robert and Sister uh, Angel with us today. They're going to come and they're going to sing a couple of numbers for us. And then they, uh, Brother Robert will be speaking to our hearts today from God's Word. So let us give him, give God our everybody's attention as we work along with them. Brother Robert, so thank you. Him on this morning. That's why we say, 
worship God. We magnify you. Worthy is the Lamb. Crown him with many crowns. The Lamb upon the throne. Heart how the heavenly anthem round. All music but his own. Awake my soul and sing. Of him who died for thee. And held him as the master's king. And we will do this throughout of all of eternity. So let the redeemed say, Worthy is the love that was slain. Glory to his name. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. Brother, you bless my soul this morning. And you, 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 you stepped into my message and you didn't even know it. Because one of the things that, that uh, kind of perturbs me or, or I'm kind of shaking uh, about what's going on in this day and time uh, it's been about a year and a half now um, that we have been going through this <laughs> ec epidemic. And it seems like for a year and a half, only thing we've been hearing about is bad news. Amen. We've been hearing about it so long that I am beginning to see and other uh, people who who are, who are seeing some of the same things that's taking place that we've heard this bad news so long that when good news come along, uh, it, it doesn't carry much weight because of the, 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 the bad news that we've been hearing for, for over a year and a half. Amen. So brother, I was pleased and honored and blessed when you got up and you shared some good news. Yes, there was a storm that came through. Amen? It was a storm that came through and everyone began to brace. And, and believe it or not, we were already in that bracing spirit 
uh, a position, I should say, a uh, bracing for more bad news. We have come accustomed to being in the position now to receiving nothing but bad news. But my brother got up this morning and he spoke about how uh, this storm came through and, 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 and how it, the damage was very limited. And because of that, we have something to rejoice about. We have something to praise God about. So when we walk into the church this morning, uh, we can come in and say, thank you, Jesus, uh, that everything is still in place. That's good news, y'all. That's something to give God praise about. He began to talk about how, how, how a life of the, the last time a storm came through, he couldn't give that same testimony, or we couldn't give that same testimony. He even alluded to every time the storm come through, that Red Springs seems to get the bulk of it. But not this time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not this time. This time, we have some good news to share. Amen? Amen? And that's what I want to come and talk with you this morning is about the good news. Amen. It seems like that when we, uh, I don't know, because we've been in this state of embracing for the worse, it's hard for us to hear the good. It's hard for us to see the good. It's hard for us to believe in the good. But I come to tell you, I come this morning to share some good news. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, and we just thank you once again. Ah, God, because you are the good news. Ah, God, you, were the, you, you, were, you are the word that became flesh, God, and we just thank you for the good news this morning. And we all can come here and, and, and stand before our holy God this morning and give you thanks and praise and honor. Be with me, God. Remove, remove me out of the way, God, so that you can be seen, you can be heard, you can be felt, God. So you can do what you do best, God. And that is you uh, show your love, your grace, your mercy, and your uh, healing power. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have your Bible, if you would, turn with me to John 10, 11. And I promise I won't be before you long because our God is good. <laughs> John 10, 11 says this. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and run away. So the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them about. The hired hand runs away because he is a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known by my own. You may be seated. When we understand that the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Why? Because we understand that there is no good thing that he will withhold from us. When we understand that uh, uh, God uh, is our shepherd, he is the good shepherd, and there is no good thing that he will withhold from us. Now, the question is, who is us? Uh, who is us, that thing, that good thing that he would not withhold from? Well, 
those who have been blood-bought, Holy Ghost filled in fire baptized, those who one day said unto the Lord, the Lord, I, I surrender all and all I owe to you. Now that's that's the us. I'm talking about us now. Uh, and it's those who who can say, uh, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Do you, are we getting clear and understand who us is? Have you ever find yourself in the situation when you realize in your life that there had not been for the hand of God over a situation uh, in your life that you would not have made it through? Can I get an amen with that? Amen. Now, those who have said amen, that's us. That's, that's who I'm talking about this morning. Amen? Am I talking about us this morning? I'm talking about the saints. I'm talking about those who can say that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. You said, he said, yeah, early when I read, he's when. In the scripture, it, talk, it talked about when he said, I know my sheep, and they know me. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Aren't you glad that you are a part of the body of Christ this morning? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord took your place and my place on that old rugged cross? Yes. And because of that, uh, 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 because of Jesus Christ's righteousness, you and I can stand this morning and give God all the praise for his marvelous works. We can look back through our life uh, uh, and realize and see periods and moments in our life where we saw God. And the beautiful thing about it, a lot of times when we look back or we were going through those things, those situations, those issues in our life, and most of the time we were looking and asking the question, where is God? And now that we look back and we see that God was there every single yes. time. Yes. 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 And the beautiful thing about it, we can look back and we say, he was even there when we didn't want him there. Amen. <laughs> That's good news, y'all. Yes. Yes. That's good news. That's the good shepherd. He laid down his life for you and I. He put on his righteousness on us. When we understand who the good shepherd is, we understand that, that God is for us. Mm, yes, it's more than the world against us. It's all about understanding, y'all. When you have this understanding, you understanding no matter how rough the storm is or how bad it looks or how ugly it looks or how bad it hurts and, 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 or how heavy it feels, you have an understanding that you're not walking this thing alone. Why? Because you have a good shepherd Amen. with you. Amen? Amen. That's the understanding. Have you ever been in a situation where, 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 where you're praising God and you magnify him and you're praying and people on the outside knowing about your situation or what you're going through and they ask you the question, how is it that you're able to praise God through everything that you're going through? You simply say, you don't understand Amen. that I have an understanding. Amen. Can I say that again? You don't understand that I have an understanding. Amen. And that understanding is, I know my father yeah. and he knows me. Yeah. Amen. That's the understanding. It's, it's, understand. it's almost like when you say, you can give this testimony that this joy that I have, the world can give it, and the world can't take it away. Amen. Why is this? Because you have this understanding. The Good Shepherd is constantly working on our behalf. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad we have a God who's constantly working on our behalf? 
Even when we find ourselves in, in, in place, have you ever been doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ or, or trying to strive uh, for, for, for things in God, just trying to be in his will, and you turn around and shoot your own self in the foot? Have you ever been in that situation? I have. But I have this understanding, and it's a beautiful thing. I have a, a, a vision here, uh, uh, knowing that God is constantly working things on our behalf. Once I shoot myself in the foot, I see him putting my foot in, in a cast and, 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 and dusting it off and, and, and putting it in a place of, uh, uh, to be healed and, and to where I can begin to walk and, 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 and continue the race. Now, I use my foot as an example, but how many times have you guys tried to, tried to do something uh, in the ministry or do something for God and you, you end up uh, doing the wrong thing? But God constantly trying to put us in the place. He is constantly opening doors and closing doors that was meant for good, for his purpose and his, and his will for our life. And through this process, we realize that in all the good we're trying to do and, and knowing that God is in our life and, and he has used this, the enemy has used it, uh, this uh, epidemic, this pandemic, this thing that we're going through, the COVID virus and the process of it all, trying to tell us different things about our God. God's not going to show up. God's not going to get rid of this coronavirus. You know, when God's going to do this thing. And people have lost their lives. Loved ones have lost their lives. So what happens through that process, sadly to say, sometimes we lose hope. Sometimes we lose our joy. Sometimes we lose our peace when we're going through this process. So the enemy uses, he uses uh, people, places, and things uh, to try to, 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 to weaken our faith, uh, to get us off course of the, the direction that God would have us to go. People who have failed us, uh, Places that have harmed us and things that we didn't get. We attach those things to God. We have to remember that we are the righteousness of God. And understanding that it is his righteousness, uh, uh, it's in his righteousness, the righteous man's steps that he orders. You see then, if people fail me, they're not God. For God would never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. And if a place, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, if a place, whether it be a church, you got hurt in church, or and some of us get hurt in home, and some of us get hurt on a job, and 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 and, and if any situations, if we, if it harms us, us or handles us indifferent, we must understand that. Those things and those situations are not our final destination. Because we're dealing with things that happened in, in our home and, and, and years ago, and we're still dealing with it. Not making any light to it, but I come to, come to tell you there's a good shepherd that can work that situation out if we hand it over to him. Amen. That situation is things that happen in the church that has hurt us, that we can't get through. Uh, I understand that it's very real because I've been there myself. But what ends up happening is if we hold on to that thing, we can't allow the good shepherd, it won't allow the good shepherd to take us where he wants to take us yes. for his glory. Yes. Amen. But when we have this understanding that he directs our steps, In our life, John 14, 3 says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. There, uh, where I am, there you will be also. I'm talking about a mansion. 
The reason I inserted that message in there, because a lot of times we lose focus of the final destination. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of, of doing life, in the middle of doing ministry, in the middle of doing family, in the middle of doing job, we lose sight of our final destination. We must remember that all of us have things and such away situations in our lives that hadn't worked out to our favor. So it seems. Knowing that the good shepherd worked all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly out uh, uh, for those who love him according to his purpose. That's an understanding, y'all. You see how they got flipped? It's an understanding. Yes, we're going to have some hard times in life. We're going to go through some situations. We're going to go through some things that we don't understand. But when you have an understanding that that was a good shepherd who was there walking with us and, and, and talking with us, and he works all things to the good. Do you hear me this morning? Someone needs to hear that. He works all things to the good. Well, yeah, I may ask the question, how can this bad thing, how can he use this bad thing, how, how can this ugly bad thing, this bad situation be worked to the good? I don't know your situation, but I can tell you this. One day, I was lost. One day, I was blind. One day I was on my way to hell. This dark soul. One day I met Jesus. Yeah. I heard someone said like this, and I'm pretty sure you guys probably heard this song. It says something like this. How can a brown cow that eat green grass produce what? Why you? Amen. Only a God like that can do that. Amen? Amen. That's when I come. That's the good news. Amen. That's the good news. So understanding that God, mm, Hallelujah. Whew. Understanding that God is always looking out for the sheep. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God is always looking out for the sheep? Would you look at your other neighbor and say, God is always looking out for you? Yes, understanding, 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 y'all. Understanding that, that God so loved you and I that He gave His Son. Jesus, whom he well, he was well pleased in. So when God looks upon you and I, he doesn't see us. He sees his son and what he did on Calvary. When, what Jesus did on Calvary was a game changer, y'all. What Jesus did uh, on Calvary changed the course of all uh, of mankind. And like I said earlier, you know, you know, I, I was once blind, but now I see. It's a game changer, y'all. Uh, I was once lost, but now I'm found. Guess what, y'all? Game changer, amen? <laughs> he, picked, he picked me up, and, and he turned, he picked me up because I had fallen, and, and he dusted me off, and he washed me because I was dirty. He, he turned me around because I was going the wrong direction, and he placed my feet on a higher ground because I was in the valley. The good shepherd did this for you and I. Can you say, game changer? When we understand that not only is Jesus the good shepherd, uh, but he is also the great shepherd. Why is it that he is the great shepherd? I'm glad you asked. You see, he is, we, you see, we understand that the good shepherd laid down his life for you and I, but it was the great shepherd, hallelujah, that rose on the third day where all power 
power over the deaf, hell, and grave. And because the great shepherd, uh, a deaf doesn't have a hold on us. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? It was the great shepherd that has allowed us to walk into holiness and righteousness. You see, it was the great shepherd that took it, took our place on the cross. Yes, it is a said that is it is important for man to die once. Amen. Uh, but because of what the great shepherd did, we won't have to die that second death. Amen. That's what Christ has given us. Uh, he has given us a spiritual birth. Uh, 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 we call it a rebirth. We call it born again. Amen. Aren't you glad that you're born again this morning? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. The great shepherd. You know, we can identify uh, people who have uh, been born again uh, and have a relationship with the great shepherd because they begin to do crazy things. And they do crazy things all the time, those who, who understand who the great shepherd is. They begin to do things like, like believing in a God that, that, that they can't see. Uh, they, they, begin, they begin to, 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 to begin to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, you know how we like to walk in our own strength and, and our own power and, and how we can, we, we, you know, we, we can walk in the things that we do. But, but, but those who understand who the great shepherd is, uh, they, 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 they lean not to their own understanding, but to the understanding of God. Do you hear me this morning? Uh, they lean not to their own knowledge, but into the knowledge of God. Uh, it, it's, it's the great shepherd that, 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 that directs their path. In other words, when life takes an unexpected turn, those who are spiritual awakening do not get bent out of shape. They don't lose grip. They don't come unglued. Why? They find, you find the person who has a relationship with the great shepherd. They become like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worry in the year of drought. It never fails to bear fruit. It's because of what the great shepherd has done. When life hits, the Holy Ghost-filled believer does not throw in the towel. He never quits, y'all. Because he understands who the great shepherd is. But he digs in deeper to the source of their strength who is God Almighty. Staying connected to the true vine, keeping a healthy attitude in the middle of chaos. Have you ever lost it in the middle of chaos? But those who understand who the great shepherd is, they have to find some way to keep it all together. Why? Because they understand they're keeping their eyes on the prize. They understand that the situation is, does not uh, uh, predict, does not indicate, does not uh, tell me who God says that I am. When you have that relationship with the great shepherd. Yes, uh, this chaos, this COVID has had our minds and our thoughts and our actions all over the place. All over the place. To the point that we've in our lives, this is, this is what we look like trying to figure out you know, which way we're going to turn, which way we're going to do. Do we worry about us? Do we not worry about us? Do we get the shot? Do we not get the shot? You know, it's just crazy. But when we understand that the great shepherd has power over all the things that life throws at us, then we can stand in a proper and have a proper attitude towards the things of God. There is nothing, and I've heard it so many times, there's nothing that's going to happen in this world 
that catches our guts by surprise. The problem is that I have found, even with myself, when I lose sight of who is in control, that's when my world becomes uncrumbled, unstable. But as long as I keep my eyes on the prize, when you know who the great shepherd half is, we have this confidence that our days ahead are greater than the former days. Let me say that one more time. When we, have, when we know who the great, great shepherd is, we realize and we have this confidence that the days ahead of us are greater than the former days. Can I get an amen? amen? In other words, knowing that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before, Walking with Jesus gives us the ability to, to say that nothing that happens in this day will overtake us, overwhelm us, or overthrow us. Because in this day, we realize that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in who is we? We is us. And who is us? Us are those who've been born and saved by the blood of God Almighty. You know, what God started at the beginning, he's going to see it through the end. We must not lose hope. We must not lose sight because he is a God, once again, who would never leave us or forsake us. That's what takes place in, in the lives of those who understand who the good shepherd is and who the great shepherd is. The good shepherd who, who, who will come out of the grave and, 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 and give us the, is giving us the victory. The great shepherd has won the battle for us, giving us the victory. The great shepherd has won the battle for us and given us the victory. The great shepherd has won the battle for us and given us the victory. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. The great shepherd has won the battle for us and given us the victory. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is for us, even in this in, in this 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 pandemic that we have been in for, for so long for us to believe that? Let me give you an example. Um, sports. Someone name a sport that they would love to be a part of or, or, or did be a part of. Just anybody. You know, throw, throw one out there. Football. Football. Okay, football. I love that. Thank you. Let's say that there was a football game going on, and we're going to call it the Super Bowl, okay? We're going to call it the Super Bowl, and you watch the Super Bowl game, and in this Super Bowl game, it, was, it, it wasn't an easy one. It wasn't one of the Tom Brady Super Bowl games. It, it, it was hard. You had to fight through it. I mean, you had, it came down to, to the uh, fourth, uh, fourth down and 30, you know, one second left on the, on the clock in order to win this game. And what ends up happening is someone threw a Hail Mary and the person caught the ball and they won the game. They're Super Bowl champs. And someone comes along, who, who said football? Who was one? Someone comes along to you, sir, and somehow out of the blue, Come to you and say, you are now a Super Bowl champs. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I'm, I'm just watching the game. No, you are now Super Bowl champs. You're like, well, okay. <laughs> you know, you, you jump in there and, and I mean that's hard to believe. You didn't play the game. You just watched it. You didn't put any effort to it. You just watched the game. How is it that you are able to be Super Bowl champs? They give you a ring. They give you the prize money for playing in the game, you know. They even give you, you know, you're taking pictures with the team, you know, the whole nine yards, and you're, just, you're right there in the middle of it. And I mean, can you imagine what that feels like? You know, you're right there, okay? 
you're, 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 you're right there. You're like, okay, how did I get here? You know, how did, how did this happen? What is safe place? Like, I, I'm enjoying the tension, you know. We got a ring, you know. I'm enjoying that. Because it's flipping. You ladies. My wife loves to walk, uh, watch baking shows. <laughs> love to watch them. She loves to watch the, 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 the contest. You know, winning the contest, being the great baking, you know, the, 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 winning the, 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 the best cook award. What well, imagine, she's sitting there on her bed watching it, and all of a sudden, they can say, you are now the top baker, and you know, how did I get here? What, what took place? What, what, what happened? You know, I received it. Yeah, okay, if you say so, you know, you know, whatever pictures, back, all over the newspapers and stuff. I had to bring it home so it could make sense. But that's the mentality that we have when we hear that Christ has given us the victory. Yeah. We sit there and we don't believe. We didn't, well, how do we have the victory? Because we didn't do that. We put in the effort to it. We didn't do anything to it. Does he know my life? Does he know what I've been through? Does he know what, he, or what I've gone through? Does, does, he, does, does, does he know who I am? Yeah, but he paid the price for you. He's giving you the victory. He's giving you the award. Yes. Yes. But sadly to say, we have the mentality that I'm not worth it. Oh, but we got to remember that God said he so loved the world that he gave. And he gave it. The only thing that we have to do is to receive it. Yes. Someone come to you and give you a Super Bowl ring. Are you going to receive it or are you going to say, no, I don't want it? <laughs> you're, you're, going, you're going to receive. Someone come and give you a cooking award and give you the money that comes with it and give you all the cooking cooking things because you know how to give you cooking things to cook. Are you going to say, no, I don't want it? No, 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 no. You're going to say, thank you. And that's what the, that's what the great shepherd done for us. The great shepherd did that for us. And understanding that, that we have the victory over death, hell, and grave. And we can sing that old song today. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Not yesterday, but today. Now we have talked about knowing the good shepherd. We talked about uh, the good shepherd who laid down uh, his life for us. We talked about the great shepherd. Uh, the one who rose with all power in his hand, conquering death, hell, and grave. Now, we want to talk about one more uh, a shepherd, and that is the chief shepherd. Amen. The chief shepherd, y'all. 1 Peter uh, 5, 4 says, And when the chief shepherd appears, we will receive the unfailing glory of God. Amen? Amen. We got to keep our eyes on the prize because we understand that there is a chief shepherd who is coming to receive us unto himself. You know, and, and, and we, we have to uh, stay in the race and realize that we can make it through whatever life throws at us because there's a chief shepherd coming. Amen? Amen. So Matthew uh, 25, 31 says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he was set on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. Colossians 3 and 4 says, When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Aren't you excited that Christ is coming back one day? Yes. You know, and when he comes back, that glory that he has, you also is gonna sh you are also going to share that same glory. Amen? Amen? That's what the enemy doesn't want us to keep sight of. Because if we keep sight of that, guess what? We can hold on to our joy. If we can keep sight of that, we can hold on to our peace. If we can keep that, we'll look at our situation and we understand that too will work out to the good. Right? Amen? And if we keep folks a focus that the chief shepherd is coming back and receive us unto himself. First Thessalonians 4, 16 says, For the Lord himself would descend from heaven, and with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpets of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
Amen. Isn't there something to be happy about this morning? Yes. Is there something to praise God for this morning? Yes. If you believe that, won't you put your hands together and just give God some praise for, his, for, the, for the chief shepherd, for the tree shepherd. And I'm closing here. Uh, Titus 3 and 13 says, looking for the blessing hope that appears of the glory of the great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of God, great Savior, Christ Jesus. That's where we put our hope at. That's where we put our trust at. That's where we put our pain at. That's where we put our doubt at. That's where we put our struggle at. That's where we put everything that this world, everything that we're dealing with at the feet Amen. of the glorious and mighty God of Jesus, who Amen. is the chief shepherd. Amen. 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 We all please stand for a moment, please. I want to pray for every person in this place. And if I ask you to do this one thing for me as I pray, I ask you to lay aside this moment. Just take this moment. Because we go through life and we, 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 we carry everything. We carry loved ones. We carry uh, jobs. We carry even the things that we're dealing with on the inside. We carry that. So for this moment, for a few moments, if you would, just lay it all to the side. Just lay it to the side. And let's just focus on him. And him, I'm talking about the son of the living God. Bow your head, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, In the sound of my voice, the voice that you have given me, I ask that you bless every person who are hearing my voice. Not because I'm something great, God, but because I am being obedient to you. God, every person here, God, from the day that you have formed them in that mother womb, you have had a plan and a purpose for them in your kingdom. And yes, God, we understand that the enemy has fought them tooth and nail for them not to see what their purpose is. Or even if they have tried with purpose, God, it seems like sometimes uh, they may uh, be in quicksand or, or can't just quite get it right. But this morning, God, I ask for you to, to renew their strength, renew their focus, renew their heartbeat and their love for you as they have laid everything beside, aside and focus 100% on you. We ask these things, God. God, where there's hurting, where there's pain, God, and God, where there's just confusion, God, I ask right now that you undo it you undo it with your love. You undo it with your grace. You undo it for your un with your mercy. I pray these things in the Son Jesus' name. The Son of the living God, who is sitting on the throne, God, pour into us now, God. God, and as we leave this place, continue to minister to our hearts and to our soul, God, that we can be the men and women, girls and boys, that you have called us to be. And we pray these things in your Son Jesus' name. Amen, and amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you.